Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Colton, and today I wanna to talk about something I've decided to do with all of my broken cameras. So if you're like me, you enjoy finding older digital cameras, film cameras, and picking them up and playing with them, occasionally you come across a few that don't work. And so for me, I have a box where I toss them, and I guess the idea is that once it gets full enough, I'll go take it to an uh, electronics recycler, um, which hasn't happened yet. And I was out working on a different project when I kind of got the idea of something I could do with these cameras instead of just tossing them out uh, or having them recycled, but giving them a final purpose. And that is to be a companion piece to the actual art in that project that I'm currently working on, and I'm sure which I'll talk about on this channel at some point. And then once that project is done, these cameras can live on as a decorative item in the studio or, or maybe somewhere in my home. So what the plan is, is to take cameras like this. This is the Konica Minolta Maxim 5D. I made a video on the channel, basically talking about how I bought it and it just instantly broke. I was told it's not repairable, it'd be cheaper to buy a new one, and also, if you do buy a new one and it works, it won't for long. These uh, particular series from Konica Minolta are well known for not having a very long lifespan. Um, so, what I'm gonna do is I am going to paint this camera, as well as a few other cameras that have been collecting dust in that box and tie them hopefully into that project and then eventually into just being a decoration. And hopefully also since this will be an external paint job, the electronics can still be recycled at some point if I ever decide that I don't want them anymore. Uh, but that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a little bit of fun, breathe a final bit of life into these cameras, into a a uh, little bit of a different purpose maybe than they were intended for. Um, and yeah, so that's the plan for this video. Let's go paint some cameras. All right, so we have our cameras. Um, they're very much in clean condition for the most part, but um, I think it'll be good just to give them a quick wipe down so that we can make sure as best as possible that our paint is going to stick. Now this one's actually already clean, but uh, some of these cameras that don't work have not been cleaned in a while. So we're just gonna kind of rub them down real quick. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on this. We're not gonna worry about how it looks. End result, just wanna try to make sure any kind of dust, oils, grease, whatever is off of it so that the paint will be more likely to stick. And doing this, you may actually pull some paint off. You may, you know, I did that once actually. I, my very first camera that I bought, I got at a pawn store, pawn shop. And um, it was dirty. It was a Canon Rebel T1i. I think it was like my first actual DSLR that I decided to buy. And it was dirty, so I took it home. I was like, I'll clean it with some isopropyl alcohol. And um, immediately started to strip paint off of that uh, kit lens. I think it's the 18 to 55 or something. I haven't shot Canon in a while, so. Um, but yeah, learned my lesson that day. Do not use isopropyl alcohol for cleaning cameras, unless you're going to ruin them with spray paint. And in that case, it doesn't really matter what you use.
All right, so as you can tell, the painting has not gone perfectly. Uh, for the most part, it's going well, but unfortunately we have some issues, this being one of the worst issues that we have where sort of overspray is ending up getting stuck on the cameras. Um, so if I'm painting and I flip it over, paint the bottom side when I flip it back, some of the excess paint is getting stuck to the top. And I think really why that is, is the heat. It's about 105 degrees on average right now, and I'm painting basically outside. So yeah, like when I flip this over, paint it, great, flip it back. Oh boy, we have some excess paint now stuck to the top because it's like it's melting and then re bonding or whatever. Um, so you can kind of see that with this one as well, where some of the yellow paint got on there. And then this area is, I think also due to the heat. So it's kind of got like this sort of cracking effect where I think it, it's just so hot that the, uh, the paint isn't, you know, really adhering perfectly in some of these areas. You can also see that the paint has really not stuck well to this particular unit. A lot of this fabric just doesn't seem to want to take the uh, paint. And then of course, this problem spot as well is a bit of an issue where it, the paint isn't you know, bonding correctly. So what we're going to have to do is go in and sort of um, you know, sand down these areas where the paint is messed up and try to add on another coat of paint to those areas and blend it in so that it doesn't look like it's, you know, had this problem. I don't know how easy that is going to be to do, uh, but I think we'll also try to paint at night. So I'm going to sand it down uh, in the middle of the day, just get it all sanded and, and prepped, put some new paper down where I'm painting so that there's no uh, excess overspray that is going to get stuck to it. And then we'll go in at night and paint over this area again so that it um, hopefully will be cooler and we won't have the cracking problems. And then also we won't have an issue with uh, any of the excess paint getting stuck to it. So we'll see how it goes um, and I'll update you again. All right, so it's been a few days of repainting, but finally we have our finished product and I think they look awesome. A Lot of great prime colors here um, and just very saturated. This is exactly what I was hoping to get. Definitely took a little bit more effort than I thought um, or expected to get to this point. And I think there's probably a couple reasons for that. One, it is just so hot here in Austin. It's averaging about 105 degrees. So I think the heat was a little bit of a component in the paint, not quite bonding to the cameras or in the part where like extra overspray paint was then like sticking to the cameras and requiring me to re-sand them. If I were to do this again, and I think I probably will, uh, I will do it in a cooler time of year but also another tip for anyone who might attempt this is to um, make sure you're painting on a clean surface. If you're using trash bags and they start to get really coated in paint, maybe just toss those out, put some fresh ones down because that seemed to help me out a ton. Uh, these aren't perfect. They have their own individual flaws, but a lot of it is things that I think I can go back later and uh, sand them down a little bit more, do a few touch-up paints and make them perfect. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, we still got what we were hoping to get. It just took a little bit longer than I expected. By no means am I a professional. So um, certainly if you have any thoughts on this process or if you do know a bit more about painting than I do, feel free to drop any tips in the comments below. I'm sure anyone who wants to attempt this themselves will appreciate any extra insight that you might provide. And also while you're there, let me know what you thought about the end result. You know, these were broken cameras that we've now given a second life as complementary pieces of art. 
Um, and then later on, once that project is done, as decorations in my home or somewhere. So yeah, that's pretty much the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, whether you got something out of the painting process or you just liked seeing my socks and sandals, if you did enjoy it or you got something, uh, do give me a thumbs up. It definitely helps out. And if you wanna see more content like this, I do produce videos every week. So if you wanna stay in the know, hit the subscribe button. But in the meantime, I'm Colton and I'll see you in the next one.